Uh, hello and welcome to our webinar covering Blue Hill Central, Instron's lab management software that launched at the end of last year. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm Nick Erickson, your host for this webinar. Uh, today I'm joined by Dan Caesar, product manager for all of Instron's static testing software, which includes Blue Hill Central and Universal, as well as the individual add-on modules such as traceability and trend tracker. Uh, we expect the presentation should take around 30 minutes or so. Uh, if you do have any questions, please use the Q&A icon uh, to submit these at any time. We'll aim to address these at the end. Um, I also wanna mention that we are recording this webinar and that all of you will receive an email afterwards with a link to the video. And it will also be available on our website, instron.com. So with that said, I will turn things over to Dan to get us started. All right, thank you, Nick. Let me share the screen so we can start with the presentation. And this guy here. All right, very good. So again, just as Nick had mentioned, um, just want to really thank everyone for taking the time out of your day, whether you're watching this live or if you're watching a recording of the session we definitely appreciate taking the time trying to learn about some of the instron products and what they can do for your lab so i hope that this session can be a productive one all right so what are we going to cover today so blue hill central as nick mentioned it was it's a pretty new product it's it was launched uh basically around a year ago so in terms of kind of the instron timeline it's a very new product uh and so i want to just reintroduce it spend a couple minutes just giving a brief overview of what it's about um kind of what the main functions are and then we'll kind of jump into the meat of the presentation where we start going through some case studies of, of labs who have implemented blue hill central to try to address problems that they were having so we're going to go through a few different stories outlining kind of the before and the after uh, to demonstrate where they are able to uh, improve their efficiency in certain areas, reduce risk in certain areas, uh, and hopefully some of those examples can resonate for you all. Uh, and then we'll get to a question and answer session at the, the end of the, of the session. If, if something comes to mind, no need to wait submit those questions as the presentation is going along. I'll certainly uh, be trying to get to as many as I can as time allows. And if we run out of time, we, we have all those questions saved. We have all your uh, email information and we'll be certain to reach out within the next couple of days to get those questions answered. Um, another thing right before we get started is that I'm gonna be doing a few different polls this, uh, this afternoon. Um, so for instance, uh, there'll be some Zoom polls. I also have the content reiterated on the slide itself, but these questions are gonna be useful for a couple of different reasons. Uh, number one, just trying to keep everyone engaged that there will be questions relevant to kind of the content that you're, you're hearing about, that you're learning about. Um, but also to help the Blue Hill team. So obviously we're, ob we're always developing new products um, and we need feedback from our users. And so some of these questions like the ones that we're starting with uh, might not pertain directly to Blue Hill Central, but are just good data points for us to understand um, how you guys operate and then and in ways that we can um, target some improvements in the future. So, if we look at the poll that Nick had just put up on the screen, uh, that these are all anonymous, so you don't have to worry about us tracking who is answering what. You will see everyone's answers at once we submit them. Um, but question number one is about barcodes. So does your lab use barcodes to identify sample or specimen information? So if you think about uh, the serial number of a sample or specimen, the lot number, the lot date, that do you have a traveler form where there's digital or paper that, that actually utilizes barcode from your production process um, as the operators and technicians are running those tests? Uh, is that barcode available, yes or no? The second question is about 
database integration. So do you store your sample information, that, that serial number, lot number, and then ultimately when the test is completed, the test results in a database? Um, so do you have a LIM system? Do you use an MES manufacturing execution system on site? Um, maybe have a SQL database where you're storing this type of information. That's the second question. And then the last is, would automating data transfer before and or after the test benefit your lab by saving time and eliminating manual entry errors? Um, so those are their first three polls. So thank you for answering those. And we can see the results that everyone, all of your colleagues or uh, kind of co-attendees submitted. So thank you for that. So there'll be a couple other polls that we do a little bit more pointed on the Blue Hill Central content for the remainder of the webinar. All right, so I'll close the poll and we are going to start with our overview. So what is Blue Hill Central? Blue Hill Central is a lab management application that enables centralized remote management of multiple Instron test systems that are running Blue Hill Universal. So really it's, it's our network solution. It's the Blue Hill software family's network solution for managing your users, their permissions, um, test templates, test results, uh, and our compliance solution, which is traceability. So traceability is a add-on to Blue Hill Universal that has been around for a few years now. And up until we released Blue Hill Central, traceability was an isolated kind of a localized solution. So if you have two or three systems that your audit trail that is associated to each system is isolated. So that system one has its own audit trail, system two, system three, they all need to be managed separately from a backup point of view, from actually accessing the data, you have to go physically in front of the frame. Um, so that is a solution that we've had for a few years now, but with the introduction of our network solution, uh, Blue Hill Central, uh, if we have the traceability module on integrated into Central, then all of that is can be remotely accessible, can be centralized, um, and so in addition to the user's method templates that our compliance solution also has moved into uh, the network offering, if you so choose. The local solution is still certainly available. But how does it work? Uh, it uses a client server architecture. And so that on the server, we host a SQL server database, which is storing all of the shared data and settings uh, and the files that your Instron machines are using on a day-to-day -day basis. So what this essentially means is that when Blue Hill Universal is connected to your lab's Blue Hill Central server, that each testing system is sending and receiving data from that centralized database. So think about an operator walks up to a frame, they go to run a test. They have a couple samples to run that when they select the method to create a new sample, we're fetching that latest method from Blue Hill Central's database and sending it back to that system. Um, maybe the operator logged in. So they actually go to the frame, they put in their user credentials. What are we doing? We're going and fetching their latest permissions and uh, and kind of what they're able to do within the software, not locally configured on that system, but in our centralized database. So this inherently eliminates the risk of variation and the, the burden of locally managing each system. So when you have localized configurations that you have to be very, very careful to make sure that they're all set up the same, um, takes time. So really those are the things that we're trying to target uh, from, from this tool. But what's important to note is that it works in conjunction with Blue Hill Universal. 
Blue Hill Universal is our testing software. It is what is used to control the Instron electromechanical frame, telling it where to go, what calculations to produce, uh, what type of where we're actually sending those results that Blue Hill Universal is used for as our testing application. Blue Hill Central is the lab management tool. So they work together. And if we're looking at the home screen of Blue Hill Central and we just want to look at what modules are available, they don't all come uh, with the product upon any purchase that you are specifying which ones that you uh, will need. Now, if we start at the left, we have lab management. Lab management is our file system. That is where we're managing all of the Blue Hill uh, test, method, test method templates, your report templates, your, your output. So your actual test results and PDFs and CSV files are all kind of managed on a file system that's in lab management and accessible by any connected system. The second is traceability. That's where we're performing our remote electronic signatures. And that's where we're also able to view that common audit trail associated to any of the connected frames. Then we have Trend Tracker, the third module, the green one is a statistic process control tool. So all of your specimen results are getting sent to the database. Trend Tracker allows you to query those results, sort them, group them, perform some statistic anal analysis, use some visual some charts to uh, to make it a little bit easier to visualize. Uh, that's Trend Tracker. And then settings, pretty obvious where we're managing settings, but it's worth bringing up because that is where we're managing all of your users. So um, again, you have a, a new operator that comes into the lab. We're not going to every system, adding them to each local system security, making sure all the permissions are lined up, that this is where you'd add that user in one location, any connected system takes those settings. One thing that's useful to just bring up before I get going with this, the case studies is that lab management, the files, traceability, so your audit trail, trend tracker, your test results, settings, all of the users, that they're actually all part of a team. And so by team, it's a new concept, you could say, in the, the Blue Hill world. Um, but in reality, a team is just a group of users. So because uh, Blue Hill Central is a solution that could be installed in within your organization and used by multiple groups uh, within your organization. So you might have a development group, an R&D team, you might have a production team, you might have multiple production groups based by product that we don't just want one giant mess of files and audit trail entries and users that by using teams, then you're able to kind of structure and, and organize your Instron uh, data and, and, and everything uh, accordingly. So that's, that's the, uh, the high level overview of what Blue Hill Central is, what the modules are. And so let's get into the, the case studies. Okay, so the first story kind of involves implementing centralized test methods. So the lab that we are going to be focusing on um, is a global packaging producer. And so they, in, the, in this case study, uh, obviously we're trying to hide actual company names, but they're a global packaging producer. They, had two, they have two labs, one in the US, one in Ireland, and in the US lab, they had two, they have two production lines, a third production line in Ireland. They're all they're producing the same type of polymer for packaging applications, things that you would experience going to the grocery store, uh, and some thin films and other packaging with adhesives um, that they are producing these on three separate lines. And as a part of their manufacturing process, 
They're pulling samples off, they're cutting them to form, they're putting them into the Instron system, pulling them apart, making sure that their process is under control. Um, and, but what's the, what's the problem here? So what's wrong? Uh, that they started to realize that product coming off of line two in the US was having kind of consistently different yield strength results um, than the other lines. So line one, line three seem to be aligned. Line two is drifting away, uh, even though they supposedly are, are testing the very same compound, the same polymer. Um, so what do they do? They have to figure out what's, what's going on. So they spend legitimately uh, three weeks trying to troubleshoot this to investigate the difference in results. And so what do they do? They start with the material. They make sure that the batches are actually the same batches. Then they go to uh, all of the transducers. So they make sure that, okay, is my load cell calibrated? Is it, is it, with, is it verified? Did anything get damaged? No, everything looks good. How about, how about the fixtures that I'm using? Are they all the same across all the lines? Is everything uh, from the load string identical? Okay, that seems to be fine. So they go through this series of checks and then ultimately they get down to, okay, how about the blue hole test method? And immediately they notice uh, something that is kind of a red flag and they looked at the, the modification dates of, of their test method. So of the Blue Hill test method file that they're accessing from Microsoft's Windows file system by each local system shows you the modified date of that file and they aren't the same. So line one and three, same date, line two, different date. So something's, something was changed, but they weren't really sure. And so they had to get their test method expert open up that method, compare the two test methods, uh, which can be a painstaking process. I think it took the guy a day or two to go through the entire method to find that ultimately it came down to kind of a nuanced value that was changed where the, the preload value and the rate at which the cross had moved during that preload routine was slightly different on line two. So the test methods were different. That was the source of the problem. They fixed it, they, they, they changed it back to the value that it was supposed to be, ran some more tests, confirmed that was the, the problem. But I mean, at the end of the day, uh, this was a disruption to their production process. It took time and resource to figure out what was going on. And uh, quality, their quality group flagged the, the process for by which they're sharing distributing and, and, and managing those test methods uh, is, is kind of a high risk item that needed to be addressed. So, cause really what are they doing when they had a new test method that was developed, they would pick a particular frame to develop it on. They would create that test method and then they would share it. So how are they sharing it for the local ones? They would use USB drives to carry it over to the different machines. For the ones overseas, they would email that method and then people in Ireland would then put it onto a flash drive, move it to the particular systems that there's all of these copies of that original method, um, which is, is a risk that there uh, is no transparency. There's no single source of the truth where if a change is made, they're all isolated, isolated from each other. So there's kind of manual communication, manual uh, distribution that's all relied upon that uh, they were trying to address. So that's where the change was in one of those copied files. No one else saw the difference, uh, but it came through with the test results. So they they kind of reached out, shared this issue with us, and we had Blue Hill Central as a, as a, as an offering, uh, and. This is ultimately what happened. So rather than having that way of managing their methods with Blue Hill Central implemented, they have their, their test method in a single location on Central's database. Each of the systems 
are communicating through their network domain to access that latest version at all times. Um, and so when we look at kind of where we are, so now we're storing the methods on the database that we also recommended and we recommend to almost all of our users to use Blue Hill Security. So you don't need Blue Hill Central to use Blue Hill Security. Security, you can use users that are created within the Blue Hill environment. You can use an Active Directory user group from your network, a couple of different options. But really, the, one of the best ways of improving data integrity is to, to turn security on and to prevent people from modifying methods and saving things that they shouldn't be changing. Um, so it's something that might take a couple extra uh, seconds to, to log in and log out. Uh, but at the end of the day, to prevent these types of issues, it's definitely worth it. Uh, and then the last item that we'll get into the second use case is being able to compare results. So on a, on a weekly basis, they're trying to compare a product coming off of each of the lines that again, they didn't have a, a super efficient process in doing that comparison. There was some manual aspects of it that weren't ideal. And so we'll talk about trend tracker in the next use case, but uh, at the end of the day for, for this packaging company, it was process and group problem solved. So I wanna show a screenshot of uh, a Blue Hill Universal application that's connected to Blue Hill Central. So if you are an operator and you go to run a test that in our most recently used screen, you can select methods as you always have. Um, but if you need to browse because you haven't used that method or you're trying to find the new one, that when you browse now and you have a, your system connected to Central, this is what you'd see. You'd see the ability to select not just local files. So if we just focus on the top here, that yes, you can still select local files, but you have the, the option to uh, select Blue Hill Central files. So that's, that's obviously new. Um, okay, so second, second case study is around multi-sample results analysis. So in this case, this lab is a little bit smaller. They're kind of a more, a more local domestic aluminum producer, kind of a regional supplier of, of aluminum. Uh, and at the time that this happened, they had, they had one system. So they had a dual column, 50 kilonewton frame to, to pull apart some, some thin sheets of, of aluminum. And what did they, what is kind of their problem? What's wrong? It's the time required to manage the process control of the aluminum that they're producing. So they primarily were caring about stiffness, the modulus of the material, but they, they had a number of other Instron results they cared about. But in terms of looking at the samples that are being produced over time, evaluating how well their manufacturing process is controlling those critical properties, standard, trying to look at things like standard deviation or control limits of their process, that it was just taking up too much time, too many files uh, to have to open up, uh, too difficult to manage. So they communicated this to us. And if we kind of go through what their use case is, they're running five batches a day. So not a crazy amount, not um, insignificant, but they run a test, five specimens produces one CSV ex export with their results. So they do that five times a day, one, two, three, four, five. So they got five different files and whether it was a daily basis or it was once a week, I can't remember, um, but the manager would then access those files that are being saved, I think it was to a network location. And he would open them up and he had a master spreadsheet that he was using to, to do the statistical analysis uh, that was required. 
And so what he would do is open up each file and paste it in, paste it in, paste it in, open up, paste it in. So you get the picture that that is what he was doing for every single sample that was run on his Instron system. And then he had to manage that spreadsheet uh, on, a, on a weekly basis. Remember to do it. Don't forget to, to do a sample that's tested. It was all kind of a manual process. Um, and so we introduced and implemented Trend Tracker into that lab. And what are we trying to do? We're automating this export and analysis process. So when the frame, uh, the, the frames Blue Hill Universal license added our trend tracker plugin for Blue Hill Central, then automatically when the operator presses finish at the end of the test, that samples specimen information and results are sent directly to the SQL database. And at any given time, the, the manager could go on, log into Blue Hill Central and access those results. So we're automating the export. There's no files that are opening, no copy pasting into a master sheet. I think they were still storing the CSV files where they needed to store it for historical purposes. But in terms of, of streamlining this analysis, that's what they're targeting. Uh, and so now what do they do? They open up Blue Hill Central. They select a query in Trend Tracker. So you can have kind of predefined queries that say, I care about this alloy with this type of test method uh, and show me all of my results from the past six months. So you define a query, you can save that query and just pull it up whenever you need to, to get all of the latest uh, specimen results associated to those, those conditions. So again, uh, process improved, problem solved. So if we look at a screenshot, I have, I think, a, a second one. But the, this first screenshot shows Trend Tracker. It shows this query where uh, all samples created before that date uh, at this particular location. Um, this Every row is associated to a particular specimen. So you can, you can sort by particular columns. You can group things. So I've grouped by operator. Maybe once in a while, you want to make sure that your operators are all doing the same thing, that there's no crazy deviation of a, of a particular result because someone is not measuring their specimen every time. They're just entering the same numbers in. Or someone is really bad at measuring, and they're all over the place. and there's just a abnormal deviation on those types of values. So uh, you can look at it in a table form or you can create different types of charts. So we have run charts where every point is one specimen. Y axis is the result that you care about. Uh, we have histograms, there's uh, box and whisker charts. There's a, a number of different charting capabilities. Uh, there's different rules. So there are kind of industry standard Western company like WECO rules that we employ uh, that are designed to flag areas of risk uh, within your process based on a data set. And so there's a number of rules kind of if you take the most basic one, it's looking to see if a point exceeds your, your three sigma control limit. So you can see this point did, and it flags it and gives you that explanation. So that is a couple to try to paint the picture of, of what they're, they're actually using within the Trend Tracker module in Central. OK, so second poll is, is going to pop up. Nick, if you can do me the favor and send that onto the screen, that we have two questions. The first is. Do you manually transfer your Instron results or do you have it automated? So we find that these are kind of the three most common things that people do, whether they're printing out the, the PDF report and they manually transfer it via paper. Maybe they do what this lab was doing where they have CSV files and they have kind of a, a digital tr manual translation and 
to Excel or kind of a, a different program like Excel, or maybe you automate it entirely. So you can have, use our, our API behind the scenes, or you can create a, a, develop a script to parse those CSV files and send them where they need to go. So that's the first question. And, and then the second is, do you uh, think that anyone in your lab would actually use Trend Tracker? So one of the things I'm trying to get at with this question is that Trend Tracker, as designed, is for our Blue Hill results. So only Blue Hill software with the Trend Tracker plugin capability can send data to the database. That's uh, one thing that we hear is that if, hey, I have other equipment, non instron equipment, if that could send data to Trend Tracker, then then I would then I would consider it. But I need everything to be in one place. So I'm curious, kind of the breakdown of who sees value as as is, or if if it really needs to have the ability to to have equipment that's non instron to to get sent. All right, thank you. Okay, so you can see the breakdowns. Yeah, manual versus Excel. So that's that's so very good. And we'll keep moving. All right, last last use case. It's going to be more compliance heavy regarding uh, approvals that are required regarding audit trails. And so the the who in this case uh, is someone in the pharma or the med device industry. It, it's a it's a global. Uh, drug delivery device manufacturer. Um, and you can see their operations that this is was one particular site that they had a production group with a team. They had an R and D like lab, so kind of separate from each other, managed a little bit uh, differently uh, with different users and different operators. Uh, and then for the sake of of some of the demonstration of the case study, we have the office setting. So where uh, some people managing these labs might reside. So what's wrong in this case? It's becoming unmanageable to meet some of the compliance requirements. And so this particular drug delivery uh, device provider, they, uh, ship product all over the world, but they primarily do produce things for the U.S. market. That's monitored and controlled by the FDA. The FDA has uh, quite a few requirements from uh, the manufacturing process point of view to ensure the best quality. Um, and yes, that's good for the end user. It's good for us who are actually putting these things into our bodies. Um, but from an efficiency standpoint, from a paper trail standpoint, that it can be a, a large uh, ask. Uh, and it's at this point with all of these systems, they had six at this particular site, it was becoming unmanageable to manage all the users and permissions and the audit trails from all of these different systems to be able to provide proof of those things uh, upon any sort of internal external audit. So we're going to go through a couple, two mini use cases for this example. The first is going to be around the approvals and the revision control for test methods. So this lab operates in, in a kind of a manual process for that approval. There's a number of different steps, pieces of paper, sign-offs that are all kind of independent of each other. It's not one solution. And so to illustrate that, if we have our methods, they're being developed in the development group, the R&D team, as product is being produced to just hone for that specific product. Once it becomes, once it's being produced, those methods are shared kind of and validated with the production team. Um, so in this case, we have one test method. It's shared with, with both R&D and the production lab. Uh, it's, it's good to go. Um, but in a case where lab manager uh, identifies something that needs to change, maybe there is a change to a standard uh, and the test method needs to reflect that. 
So what do they do? They kind of go to the development team, make them aware of this, consult with them, and they create a list of exactly what needs to change. And so this is like a formal document. Um, I can't recall if this was paper or digital form, but in any case, they're saying that they're listing very explicitly uh, the changes that are going to occur from say Rev, Rev 3 to Rev 4. And they make that list and now they have to get it approved. So not only are the developers uh, approving it, the managers reviewing it, making sure that it looks good. They have a quality, uh, say someone from QA come to make sure that there's nothing that uh, is of concern of those changes. And they ultimately get the go ahead that those changes can be made. And so now what do we do? We walk that back over, file it away, whether that's in a, like a physical piece of paper filing it, or if it's in digital form, you're trying to move that scan that document in and move it into a, some sort of uh, compliance management platform. Um, and now we're good. So now we are both are running uh, a validated test method in both locations. But there's a lot of movement. So really, if we're trying to eliminate kind of all of those all of those different steps and physically being in front of the lab, uh, accessing the method, making the changes, signing pieces of paper, scanning them, filing them, um, that with Blue Hill Central, that now we can do these things remotely. Of course, if you need to go into the lab, you, can, you will be going into the lab, but in terms of uh, minor changes that need to be made, you can do a lot of these things remotely. So our QA, they're in their office, lab manager can, kind of stay in their offices if they so choose. And all of these different areas are connected to our Blue Hill Central server. So uh, the four systems in production, the two systems in the R&D lab and are any Blue Hill Central client, uh, it, they're all talking to the same place. Uh, and when they actually go through that review process, this is what they would be looking at. So they would have uh, a, so I guess just to preface, this is what you're going to see when you go into traceability in Blue Hill Central. There's two tabs. The first is reviews. The second is the audit trail. So when you're in reviews, this is where you will see any pending review that you have the, the permission to approve. So not everyone can go in and approve anything. If you have the rights to approve that type of file, whether it's a, a test result or a test method that was changed, that you'll see them here. You can see what the change was. So in this case, Mary uh, has the, the crosshead rate changing from 60 to 50 millimeters per minute. So we have all of that necessary audit trail information of the timestamp the user, the affected item, the previous value, the new value, so every, everything that you need. And they can either reject or approve. So you'd be doing this to apply your electronic signature associated to your user credentials. You'd be typing that in via the keyboard to sign off on that change. And that would be tracked associated to that file in the audit trail. If we go to the audit trail, uh, it's basically just the chronological list of everything that's happening on any of the connected systems. So as users are logging in or logging out of Blue Hill Universal while they're testing or Blue Hill Central while they're performing reviews or, or adding users, all these things are being captured in the audit trail. Uh, so when you create new users, change permissions of a user, change other settings, as you create files, when you're running tests, as people are reviewing things, all of these things are getting captured. Uh, so if you ever want to go into the audit trail, you can see everything or you can filter by a particular user, by a particular Instron system ID. Um, 
a number of different by a, a date range. There's a, a various options where you can filter by, you can print it out. Um, so it's kind of standard audit trail behavior. Okay, so then that's the first the that's the first mini use case. The second one that we'll end on is user management. So they're using Blue Hill three on all their Instron frames. And it was becoming very redundant and it just opens them up to risk because of the redundancy and the localized configuration of managing all of the users that are coming into their, that are operating their frames. So I'll give them a thumbs up for using security, but they gave us a thumbs down in Blue Hill 3 for, for how easy it was to use. So that's why we pointed them to Blue Hill Central. Um, but if we look at a, a, an actual situation, so you might have a new person coming into the production lab, or maybe Sally gets promoted and she used to be able to just run tests, but now she can uh, not just run tests, but she's in part of the development process and she's able to edit methods. So whenever any of these things uh, happen, which are inevitable, what are we doing? Manager, is walking up to every frame because this is again before we've introduced central um, and they would be going to every single frame changing those permissions locally at each frame and hoping that they did everything properly so very time consuming opens them up to risk but in the environment where they're using blue hill central they're not moving they're staying lab manager can add the user from their desk kind of comfort of their own office set them up and then add them to the appropriate team and any of the instron frames that are connected to that blue hole central database which would be all of them in this case then that user can can log in uh, and you're only setting it up in one one location but one thing I did want to just allude to is that they they actually did set up in this case two separate teams, one for production and one for their development lab. Um, so that they needed the flexibility to have different um, approval processes for for methods and files that were being used in one location versus another. Uh, that in the development process they needed to iterate without having two or three signatures required. For production, they needed those two or three signatures. They did not want people to be changing things. Um, and then from a user management point of view, who can access and test for R&D versus production, they needed to manage those users separately, they needed to have separate audit trails. So they created one team for production that people would log into using those systems and another for R&D. So at the end of the day, when they were looking at kind of their before and after of their approval process of capturing the audit trail of, of as things are changing in those methods, um, this automates quite a bit of it. We're capturing everything that's changing. It's very hard for you to be confident when you are making changes to methods that, yes, this is the only thing that changed because uh, it is all kind of a, a manual evaluation. Uh, and then in terms of managing their users, rather than walking up to every single system, managing it that way, they employed uh, the, the team structure within Blue Hill Central. I believe they also use Active Directory. So rather than actually creating profiles in Blue Hill that they coordinated with their IT team to, of course, these systems are all communicating through the same network on their domain. And rather than using kind of made up user profiles in Blue Hill, they are using their actual Windows credentials to log in and out of the application. All right, last poll, and then we'll get to questions. So this, uh, is if we look at everything that we kind of reviewed today, so those modules, lab management, which is where we're accessing all the centralized files, 
traceability for approvals and the audit trail, trend tracker for results analysis and settings just for managing users, which is no matter uh, what modules you'll get, you're all, you will always get that. Um, what do you see that would actually help your lab? Um, so again, during the, if this is something that's of interest to you, then that, those are questions that are going to be asked uh, by the Instron sales rep to make sure that uh, we're only quoting what is appropriate. So you can select any and all that apply. Okay. Awesome. Very good. All right. Good distribution. Uh, so thank you for that. That was the last poll. Again, thank you for for uh, for answering some of those questions. And now I'll start to answer some of your questions. I didn't even plan that, but I like. It. All right. Let me. I have to access the Q&A portal. Okay, so we have 15 minutes. Let me see, there's two, four, six, eight, eight questions. There's a couple of pre questions that came in. So let's just try to answer as many as, as, many as we can. Again, I'll get to these uh, after the fact if we can't. Okay, so first question, does Blue Hill Central allow modifying methods at any computer connected to Blue Hill Central? So I don't know if I fully understand that question. Uh, if I take it as a literal sense of, can we modify methods with Blue Hill Central? I think we'll start there. So Blue Hill Central is the lab management tool uh, for organizing the files, for doing approvals, and looking at the audit trail, looking at test results, that it, to actually modify or create a new method or to view a full sample file, that those are things that you're doing in Blue Hill Universal still. So if you wanna be able to, to do both remotely, that you would be purchasing uh, what we call an offline license of Blue Hill Universal. So what that allows you to do is you just take, so typically you buy Blue Hill Universal, it's a license that, that is connected to the system itself. But if you wanna be at your desk and you wanna be able to create new methods and look at samples, that for a very affordable amount, you can get one offline license, get unlimited offline licenses to distribute with, within your lab um, to download Blue Hill Universal on your computer to, to do that method editing. Um, and in those cases, then you would open up Blue Hill Universal, you would have it connected to, to Blue Hill Central, just like all of your systems are, and then you would be able to access those methods, edit them, save them. Um, and of course, depending on what team you're logged into, what user, you of course have to have those permissions, but that is kind of the workflow. Okay, uh, next question is, can settings be con connect to a single or multiple active di directory domains? Um, so we do support multiple domains. There are certain situations where it, uh, it doesn't work um, in, in a few different cases. So in for that particular person, if, as you're setting it up, if you could, reach out to tech support or the Blue Hill team where we can just define exactly how your domains are set up and see if it's supported or not. All right, next question. So Trend Tracker, does, it, does Trend Tracker uh, work retroactively on tests that have been completed before the installation of Blue Hill Central? Very good question. So you get everything installed and your database is empty. Like, okay, that's not very useful. Um, you have to wait to congregate data. Uh, you can 
batch import, or I guess from Blue Hill Universal batch export to the database. So you can point this batch export wizard to a folder or multiple folders that contain all of your Blue Hill sample files, click send, and then you can send that to Trend Tracker's database. I believe it works back to Blue Hill 2. So Blue Hill files produced by Blue Hill 2, 3, or Universal should be able to have no issue sending that data. Uh, okay, is there a past webinar videos which cover the standard traceability module on how to, to set it up, how to use it, and test method revisions? We have the module, a bit nervous turning it on. So uh, I would go to our YouTube channel, type in Instron traceability, or I'll just reach out to you. There's a couple webinars that we've done in the past that are full hours about traceability specifically that you can watch all the way through and, see and, and try to gain a little bit of confidence um, with how it works. Uh, so Cody, another question, can Trend Tracker export results into CSV or other formats? Good question. It's funny, a lot of these questions um, are, I remember answering in the launch of the product eight months ago, but in the use cases, in this case studies, I, I definitely skipped over some things. So these are great questions. Um, yes, Trend Tracker can export into results into CSV and other formats. I believe it's CSV and uh, I think XML or XML, either one can be opened directly into Excel. I think the XML format keeps the the calculation of what of standard deviation of mean value rather than just converting it to text. But uh, yes, there are a couple options there. So any query you can just click export and it sends that data set to a file. Quoting. So if you need a quote, um, I think we're going to follow up. So anyone that asks for that we're going to forward to our sales group. Um, other questions. If, if there's an error for the specimen info, how to fix it after the data is stored? That's a good question that to do so, if you see a problem in your in trend tracker, there's a typo, there's a, a miscue uh, that you can find the associated sample, open it up in Blue Hill Universal, find the impacted specimen and the field that's problematic, correct it, and then save that and send it back to the database. And it won't duplicate all those entries. There's unique identifiers of every specimen associated to every sample, and it will, it will. Uh, overwrite the previous uh, field associated to that specimen that you changed with the, the new value. Online demo, of course, you can request, I think on our website, there's various places to request demos for hardware, uh, system demos, or for software. Um, can we set up trend tracker, the three Sigma lines on various properties at the same time, or is there a limit on the number of variables we can evaluate? So you can produce as while there's one table where you're sorting things associated to that query, you could create five, five charts, 10 charts one for each particular property that you care about, and then each data set and the evaluation of the standard deviation lines or control limits or the, the acceptance limits that your customers define that you can plot them specific to each property. But most of the charts are uh, isolated, are, are focused on, on one property, and then you can 
either do a run chart of every specimen or you could do grouping. So you could say, I wanna see my temperature. Maybe you're recording temperature at the start of the test and you have three separate labs and you wanna make sure that all three are within the correct limits that you could group and sort by the lab location um, as a grouper, but not just, you couldn't choose multiple properties to do it. It, would, it wouldn't be readable. All right, we have five minutes. There are more questions. Let's see if I can. Okay. Uh, yeah, can, so can the control charts be filtered by a user entered variable? For example, if the user enters material type, could the data be filtered for one specific type of material? So yes, definitely. So even though your results, maybe your results table doesn't have that information, you might have break load and you might have your width and thickness in your results table, but maybe the sample input or the specimen input that maybe you don't have in the results table is that it's poly polymer A, and then maybe you're testing polymer B, polymer C, and you're sending it all to the same database, that that sample and specimen information, those fields that are being entered by the operator or selected by the operator, that that is sent with the data. So if all of the specimens were from material type A, then you can, in Trend Tracker, query and make sure that that parameter is only showing results from material type A. Or if you want to look at material type A, B, and C, you can have all of that included in your table. And then I want to group by material type. And then you'd see the groupings of material type A, material type B, and C, and the associated statistics. Um, same thing with the charts themselves, that you could select a particular material type and show only that data. Can there data export template be customized by user? Uh, so if we're talking about the file, when you press export from Trend Tracker and it just sends, it creates a CSV or XML file from the, the table, that is not configurable. It is in configurable in the sense that it's associated to your query. So your selected fields and your columns that you that you care about, that's what will be exported. But if the same user opens up that same query, they're going to get the same export. Um, the one thing that's worth the other side of that question that you could be asking is uh, what is sent, maybe. What is sent from Blue Hill Universal to the database? What's getting exported? That, that's actually a great question that I haven't put too much detail on, that when you're running tests in Blue Hill Universal and you're pressing finish, that the every single method doesn't need to get exported to the database. Every single test does not need to be exported to the database. Blue Hill Universal knows to export to Trend Tracker when your test method in the export area, there's a Trend Tracker uh, connection setting. So if you want that test method to send data to Trend Tracker to the Blue Hill Central database, then you have to enable that in your method. And then you select uh, if what type of information you want sent. So if you want your specimen parameters and your, your other uh, inputs, select that. And then you can select results table one or and results table two. So you can selectively choose what's being sent to that database, but that's by the test method. It's not necessarily by the user. Last question that I'll get to, how can we install Trend Tracker in our system? So everything that we talked about today, Blue Hill Central, the plugins on the Blue Hill Universal side, that you have to be aware of the version of software that you need. So 
Uh, certain versions don't have those plugins. If you want to connect to Blue Hill Central, you're going to need the latest Blue Hill Universal version because we don't have that under the hood. I believe we released the product in version 4.28, uh, but right now I think we're at version 4.38. Uh, so we have to be conscious of what, what version of software we have to upgrade to. And then we have to purchase those add-ons to that license. So you upgrade to the latest software and you say, I want the trend tracker option that handles, that's done for any system that needs to send data to trend tracker. But that's, we're two, we're a minute over. Sorry, Nick, uh, you can wrap up quick. <laughs> All right, uh, thanks, Dan. Um, before I let everyone go, I just have a few quick notes. Uh, just a reminder uh, for any questions that we didn't get to, which I do see if there's a few of them. So I will get those over to Dan and he can address those by email. <clears throat> and just a reminder, this was recorded. So we'll send out a link to the recording in case you do want to go back and reference or share with anybody, any colleagues. Um, last thing I want to mention is we do have a couple of webinars coming up that uh, we're pretty excited about next week on the 10th. Uh, two of our product support engineers will be here to discuss Partner. That's one of our legacy software programs. They're going to be covering the current status of Partner, uh, what that status means for labs running that software, and what migration to Blue Hill Universal looks like. And then the week after that, on the 16th, our biomedical market manager and our automation specialist will be here to talk about the growing demands in the biomedical industry and, and how more testing labs are turning to automation to solve new challenges. Uh, so during that session, these two will discuss how automation can optimize testing throughput. And you also have a chance to see a live demonstration of a couple automation systems. Uh, that's going to include our Cobot and XY stage. Um, I'm dropping a link into the chat now that goes over to our webinar page on our website. Uh, if you want to learn more about those sessions, please go to that page. And then with that said, I just want to say thanks for Dan for presenting today. Your, your animations in this uh, webinar were top notch. Uh, and thanks to all of you for, for attending. We really appreciate you joining us. And we hope to see you again next time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your days. Day, not days. <laughs> all the days. Thank you. <laughs>